In this episode of Business Success, Graham and Leanne Carling are returning to the UK, specifically London, to meet with an individual who built one of the most recognisable brands in the home maintenance sector in London, and who then went on to sell the company for a reported £140 million. This is, of course, Charlie Mullins, the founder of Pimlico Plumbers. You are watching Business Success. Business Success is the program where Graham and Liang Carling discuss business with other industry leaders from around the world. Graham and Leanne themselves building a group of companies through the strategy of company acquisition, which now has a multi-million pound group turnover and employs hundreds of people across the country. Today, they are meeting Charlie Mullins, the founder of Pimlico Plumbers, a company he built to a turnover of £60 million per year and employed over 400 people. Charlie was given an OBE for his services to the plumbing industry in 2015, but in 2021 made the decision to sell the company for a reported £140 million. With Charlie is his fiancée Raquel, who has spent her life in the music industry and is about to embark on a significant period in her career. Whilst Graham and Leanne are in the business of buying companies, in this episode, we will be talking to Charlie and Raquel about the lessons learnt in business and also the experience of selling the company. Charlie, Raquel, thanks very much for inviting us into your lovely home here on the banks of the Thames. Uh, delighted to be here. It's yeah. absolutely beautiful. Thank yeah. you very much for inviting us. So, you know, Charlie, mm -hmm. one of the things we want to start with is you just sold your business, uh, well, 16, 18 months ago almost, and um, no, for a huge sum of money. Uh, tell me, the process of, uh, you know, what was it, what did that feel like going through the sale process? And it, it was just coming out or still at the tail end or during the pandemic. How did that feel to you and the process of going through that? You know, you started the business in 1979, uh, to, to sell your baby, how, you know, how was 40, that? 41 years down the line, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, it's a massive thing, but obviously the, the amount of money that I sold it for, you know, made a lot of difference. It was one of them offers I don't think I could turn down. I think mm -hmm. it was the right time. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they say, don't say how much it's sold for, but it's 140 odd mil or something, you know. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and, that, and that's just something you can't really turn down, I think, yeah. you know. Um, and, and it's an amazing thing because you never think you're going to part with it. and you know, I've been, you know, ever since I know sort of Raquel, like, um, she even said to me, I just don't see that you're going to get rid of it. And um, I've got no regrets with it, you know, I mean, that's for sure. Um, and the money's coming handy, that's for sure. Um, and, and life's wonderful on it, but, you know, what does it feel like? I mean, it's, um, it's quite frightening, to be honest, because um, you don't think you, you can do it. Um, you, th you know, as many times I was stopping and starting and, you know, they're asking you questions and they're knocking mm. your business and, yeah. you know, in order to get a better price and, um, you know, uh, it, you know, I didn't deal with the sale with it too much, fortunately, because I would have just walked away and mm. told them to stuff it like kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, my son and other members of the family that work there, yeah. they, they sort of, um, sort of more dealt with it. And, um, yeah, I think it was the right move, the right time, you know, mm -hmm. to, for sure, because, not many people achieve that and it's uh, yeah. you know it's, it's an hard thing I think to part with it and I know many people that couldn't but um, as I say undoubtedly the money come into it and you know we've all got a sell by date yeah. um, you know 41 years and uh, in the business and um, it's you know they, fortunately you know I'm still very busy and getting on with other things but mm. great great move I think wasn't it you know well, you've got 140 plus million reasons to be happy, I suppose, you know, yeah. you know, that comes in handy. But in terms of the, the, when did you decide then? What was the process in your mind? Did you decide, did you, de or was it something that just came out the blue? How did you decide to sell, you know, to sell a yeah. business? Well, I think that, um, you know, I'm probably four or five years ago, first came in my mind that the, the business was booming and, and, to, to, to make it go even better, we needed to really like step it up and maybe go national, mm -hmm. even talking about going in Dubai. Yeah. And I started to sort of think to myself, you know, for, to do that, I've got to spend at least another five years like working 24 seven. Mm -hmm. um, and I, have I really got the warmth anymore to want to do it? And so I was weighing all that up. And, and I, I, if I'm being honest, I felt that, that 
you know, I was holding it back, you know, at this stage that, you know, we could really go national, we could really take on, you know, a broad kind of thing. I was turning these offers down to get involved in it and I just thought to myself, you know, I've either got to give it my best shot or sort of jump ship. Mm. And, um, you know, and, and again, I think we've all got a sell by date, you know, and, and we know money's very important, but obviously it's not, you know, I'd hate to have died in the workplace, you know mm. what I mean? I mean, a lot of people said that's what I do. You know, we all like work rollicks, I mean, we all work rollicks yep. sitting here kind of thing. And um, so it was a big decision. I mean, mm. you know, I mean, funny enough, I'm going to just doing a story recently shortly in the press about my biggest um, mistake I made in business. And the biggest mistake I made in business is selling my business. Right. You know, even though it's a wonderful thing to have done, mm -hmm. but you know, when I think about it now, I could have, you know, gone national. You, you know what we yeah, like. Yeah. We, we, yeah. It's not necessarily about getting pan notes. It's more mm -hmm. about you know proving what you can do, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And were you approached to sell, or did you market the, the, the business to sell? Um, we'd always been approached over the years, mm -hmm. always, yeah. and, and you know, there's no way I was ever going to sell it, kind of thing. And you know, you think what, what mm -hmm. liberty these people are trying to take this business off you. Mm -hmm. um, but then all, all of a sudden we sort of put a package together and said, well, let's just kind of see. And, you know, I thought we'd get about 100 mil. And then, you know, when the office was coming in, it, it was, you know, getting better and better. And I'm thinking, bloody hell, you know. And then, you know, we've just gone through COVID. Yeah. It's, and there's definitely going to be a tough time coming up, you know, mm. with, with, you know, all this COVID, all the, all the um, payments they give out. And things were getting tougher. But, you know, it also we was just, we was actually booming, do you know what I mean? Mm. And, and I... And, you know, it's a big decision, you know, a big yeah. decision. But um, if I had it now, it'd be worth more dosh. Right. And, you know, I, I think we just had to expand more. Mm. And I had about, I think about 10 members of families there, you know. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And mm. it's an hard thing to do because, you you know, you think they're all relying on you. But, you know, there is, there is, there's, there's other things out there which I've discovered there. You know, I've got involved with, with, um, Raquel on uh, the music side of things, you know, I don't know nothing about music, mm -hmm. but obviously I know about business and, and that's been quite helpful. Mm -hmm. and, and that's going very well on that. It's probably something I never thought I'd do. Yeah. I'm doing a bit more property these days, mm. getting involved, buying it mainly for myself, but or for family or whatever. And, um, and that's all wonderful to do. And, and then the travelling mm. side of it. Yeah. So, yeah. How long did the process go then from when you decided you were going to sell? Did you go through like a competitive process? So, you know, you went to the market and there was, you know, various interested parties. Was that, how long did the, the, the from me say, right, okay, right, I'm up for it. I think I'm going to go, you know, explore the, explore the selling option to instructing somebody to do that for you. How long yeah, did that well, process it, it, I would say it's probably over four to five years because because of the break of the COVID. Yeah. It was a bit like, okay. you know, you've got something that's worth a lot of money, then all of a sudden it looks like you haven't got anything. Yeah. Um, so it's quite a long process, and, and if I'm being honest, we, we tried it once before, put the package together, and um, if some people was coming in to buy it, but they was being a bit mean, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I just come away from it, I thought, you know, there's no way we're giving it away. Yeah. And then we come away from it, and then went again a couple of years later. But overall, I would say the process took about, because of the break in COVID, about four years. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a long process anyhow, and it's probably... You know, it's probably one of the worst things that you look forward to. I mean, there's only the one good bit about it is when, you know, you put when the money hurts. in your bank. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. you, me <clears throat> you mentioned that if you weren't heavily involved in the sale or the process of the sale, you wouldn't have went no. through with it. Mm. Is there any advice that you could give? Because mm. some of our, or a lot of your, our viewers will be looking to exit their business. Is there any advice that you can give yeah. to be prepared mm. for, for that? For yeah. that? Well, um, I mean, my sort of son sort of dealt with it all. He's been like CEO of the company and, you know, for, for many years, been about you know, 30 odd years, I think he's been there. And um, so he dealt with it. So he could put up with the people going, oh, you know, your, your dad's got this wrong and he shouldn't have done this mm. and he shouldn't have done it. And he's, and he's looking, I'm thinking, you're having a laugh and you're <laughs> the biggest independent plumbing company in London, most successful, most recognised in the world, making loads of money. And you're telling us, you know, yeah. we shouldn't do this, shouldn't do that. Yeah. He said, if you was there, you'd have told him to just fuck yeah. off kind of thing, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So the advice I would give if you've built that business up is um, definitely get a good agent. Mm -hmm. The agent... Um, Cavendish, Cavendish were yeah. absolutely mm -hmm. brilliant, mm -hmm. absolutely superb. Yeah. And uh, they actually told me to stay away, keep out of the business. They said, because you're just going mad. <laughs> you know, they said, you were just, you know, people are coming in, oh, he shouldn't have said this, he shouldn't have done this. And, mm. you know, they didn't seem to be praising anything. 
Yeah. And um, you know, who was, who was this? This was the buying company. All the buyers. All the buyers. What yeah. happened? They shortlisted the buyers down. Yeah. Yeah. The real serious ones, and then got them to talk with their money and not their mouth kind of thing. Make uh-huh. sure they stack up. And now they're competing with each other, but of course, mm. you know, certain ones were knocking it. Yeah. Um, the Americans that bought it neighbourly, they didn't knock it at all. They wanted it badly. Right. But other people were trying to get a, a deal on it. And, and my son said, you know, even if, even, you know, he said, if you was there, you would not sell it to that guy just to not let him have it. But, but this outfit, they seemed good. You know, they, mm-hmm. they're the biggest home service company in the world. And, and it did look like they was going to take it further and really m- make it happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. It just shows you a lot of people could be really because they're picking at your baby. They're, they're yeah. pulling yeah. apart yeah. your baby. And, you, know, it, yeah. 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 So, yeah. you know, and you think, what right have these people got to be, yeah. you know, um, and, and, and it was crazy, really. And, and um, you know, but they were still very close. At the end, it was all about bidding. And, and um, you know, I, I think I would have picked the Americans because it, it did look like, you know, they got a good pedigree. And, and mm-hmm. you know, I didn't want the company to, you know, just disappear kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so uh, I think I picked the right people at the time, yeah. Mm. So they're obviously private equity back KKR or neighbourly. Yeah. What of what of the has the what's been the has there been any changes? Well, with the, yeah, you, yeah. What's what's happened since? What have they? Uh, has it has it? Yeah, well, uh, you know, obviously being there that long, I still get a yeah. few sort of the staff come on to you and sort of you mm. know saying that you know it's you know it's never as good since you're not there, mm. which is good to hear. Mm. And they've changed so much. They're trying to change vans and changing the way we work, yeah. the personal service. And, um, you know, allegedly it's not doing as well as it should be doing right. at the moment because yeah. of changing that. Mm-hmm. But what it does prove to you is that you've got it right because you're never sure how right you've got it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you've always got staff that saying, oh, don't like this, don't like that. But obviously majority like it. Mm-hmm. And, and they're staying now, the staff saying, well, one thing for sure, you know, Charlie and his family had it right here because yeah. it was all earning bundles of money mm-hmm. and never out of work. Great name, great reputation, but somehow they're changing. You know, our format was very personal service, and I think they've tried to put it all in about numbers now. And yeah. you know, it, I'm sure it works for many businesses, not but not for uh, yeah. not for that business. It won't work. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, in terms of um, if you go back, uh, Charlie, so for for growing your business, clearly marketing has been a, a, a really successful part of it for you in the construction industry, in particular. When we say this tongue-in-cheek you know our businesses we, we have businesses in the construction sector in Scotland and people say well you know the, the, the Scottish construction sector is still stuck stuck in the in, in the 60s but we didn't realize it was the 1860s you know it was that <laughs> far back and certainly in terms of marketing and IT and all that stuff yeah. you have used how important was the marketing side of it for you not just when you were growing your business but what value did it add to to uh, to, to the business do you feel at the sale, even because yeah. of the profile. Well, look, the marketing was why it was such a great business. No yeah. two ways about that. I mean, yeah. you can have the best business in the world, and if no one don't know about it, it's yeah. no point. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, I, I took on a market manager years ago, about thirty odd years, stayed with me all that time, and he just said it's all about recognition. Mm-hmm. You know, whether you be on a billboard, whether you be on the telly, the radio, don't matter where you are, and if it happens to be for the right reason, yeah. then that's it. So. Once I'd got that in my mind, recognition, we have just, wherever we could portray ourselves, we would. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, when we got involved with proper PR, mm. it just changed overnight, if I'm being honest. Right. We started proper PR in, two, in, the, in 2000 when we bought a new building. And, um, you know, we all learned from somebody. A company came down from Leeds and, and she's got a very big sort of door company, electric doors and garages, and she said, you know, who's your, can I come down and have some pictures done? Yeah, of course. And she said, it being a magazine, she said, who does your PR? I said, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, <laughs> PR? What are you, yeah. we're, we're a plumbing company. Yeah. She said, well, you must have PR. And yeah, no. Mm. Anyway, she used a company called Recognition, mm. and I still use them today. I don't know successful businesses now that haven't got former PR. Yeah, yeah. You know, and yeah. it's amazing. And, you know, it, it worked well in the end. I, that's what I was doing was the PR with them, and yeah. uh, it's a great job, isn't it? You know, I mean, yeah. I mean, it's lovely to be recognised, and you know, people are listening to you and inspired by you. Yeah. Um, so I, I think it's an amazing mm. move. You know, yeah. PR is so so important. Yeah. We wouldn't be the company we was without it. Yeah. And you think that added value in terms of the profile of the company at the end for like a, a you know neighbourly. You know, great company in London, but you know, great, great brand, great name. Yeah, well, that's it. You, you know, you're big business people yourself. Yeah. You know, 
the importance of a brand. And yep. so, so we built a brand in plumbing. And you know, if you said to anybody in London, name a plumbing company, they only come come up with Pimlico. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it, it's it's a priceless sort of thing. But of course. I never set out to do that, you know. You just don't mm. set out to do this. And I'm a great believer. We all believe. We all learn from somebody. Mm. We see someone do something, and you know. And, and like I said, this guy I took on, market manager, he just said it's called recognition, and and I keep it simple. And funny enough, the company I use is called Recognition. Yeah. What a great name. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And I've used various other ones, you know, um, over the years, and mm. uh, and they've all been great. You know, I just I think it's priceless. Yep. I mean. You know, you might give them five grand a month, they get you a couple of telly slots worth 100 grand a time, yeah. documentaries, I mean, it's a yeah. no-brainer. Yeah. yeah. But funnily enough, a lot of people, they don't see the value of it because, it, you know, you can't... Yeah, you, 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 you don't want to get an immediate... Yeah, you yeah, want to get... You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but, yeah, yeah. you know, if we're in the paper or we, you know, together now, we, we do anything, a story, and then all of a sudden it has that knock-on effect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, it's going from strength to strength. I mean, if I'm being honest, I think we get more known now than... When I was actually doing the plumbing, yeah. you know, mm. now it's like, you know, oh, you sold that company, or oh, you guys yeah. are on the telly. Um, so, yeah, it's a priceless sort of thing. I think, you know, for any business that wants to be out there and be successful, mm. PR without a doubt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are you guys doing now? What are you up to? You've, uh, you know, well, life's good, life's good. What are you two, what are you two up to? Well, I'm a singer songwriter, uh -huh. so I'm working on my album. Um, mm -hmm. So I've got a team. Uh, well, I've built a team of 20 people now, roughly. Um, and I'm working with some hit producers. Um, I think I'm three out of five um, for the, over the last three months now. I've got three more to go. Um, yeah, and that, that's just going amazing. We, we've been to a few uh, massive events um, in the last quarter of last year. And, um, yeah, I mean, like... We've met um, a lot of people and... Um, yeah, it's really starting to lift off, I think, for, for Raquel now. Yeah. Um, mm. She's got a new manager, uh, Hilary Shaw, who's ex Girls Aloud manager. And all of this, sorry, obviously she's got the talent and the songwriting and, 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 and the looks and all the bits that go with it. And, you know, but through the business, we've met so many people over the years. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, somebody knows somebody and, and you know, now she's been introduced to... Um, uh, Hilary Shaw, ex Girls Aloud, and she's just taking it to a different level. Mm -hmm. um, the journey's been amazing. Like, I mean, I was a cover artist in Dubai, so I know you're, you guys are from Dubai. Mm -hmm. um, and I lived there for a long time, and I was just, you know, I, I worked hard as a cover musician, but, you know, I was, you know, the, like you said, there's always a sell by date, and I kind of had to get off uh, yeah. the merry go round mm -hmm. which I was on. and. Mm -hmm. And that was my advice I'll give you. And that was actually Charlie. Mm -hmm. So Charlie got me off that roundabout yeah. and... You know, I said to her, she'd been doing it years and I said like, you know, this is, you know, I don't know nothing about music, but, uh, you know, I've got, obviously got some business brain there and, and <laughs> I just said, you're just going around in circles and yeah. you've got to stop and start again. You know, yeah. I'm very grateful that I have somebody who I can be like, oh, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Oh, what do you think of that person kind of thing? And, mm -hmm. and that is, you know, priceless for me. I mean, mm -hmm. just to have somebody in your corner like that mm -hmm. with a really, really good business mind, as you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I know, I know mm -hmm. nothing at all about music. I know I look like I'm out of work, Rod Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> He's from up your way, isn't he? Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> but again, I, I put Ra Ra Raquel in, in touch with um, um, a PR company, Keith Bishop Associates, mm -hmm. very much in solo in the music industry. And it's just had that knock on effects, you know. Yeah. You know, I was giving her this advice and it was starting to change for her. You know, yeah. I said, you've got to pick and choose like who you work for and you got to make sure you get the right money and come away from all this cutthroat business. Because when I run the plumbing, we never got involved in this cut price nonsense. Yeah. You know, I'm a great well, you believer. You start to say no, that's the thing. You start yeah. to realise, yeah. you know, your worth and then you start to say no, which is it's good advice, yeah. really, yeah. because, you know, you get a lot of oh, people I mean, that are just, yeah. you yeah. know, they'll, they'll take anything. And not, a, a few reasons, yeah, that can be good, because obviously people have to make a living, especially in the music industry. And it's very hard to make a living in the music industry. But... A few reasons why saying no works is one, you will then be introduced and, and be put in in a um, environment where you'll you'll make more money mm -hmm. because you know that's that's where you've felt that you deserve to be mm -hmm. because you know you're worth so you're going to ask yeah. for more money, mm -hmm. um, but also it helps 
the rest of the people in the music community as well. It helps them to make more money. Yeah. Because yeah. as soon as you get somebody, and this actually happened in Dubai, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to leave Dubai, because, you know, it just became so oversaturated. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was making loads of money at one point in Dubai. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, you get all these agents come in, just blocking, you know, Tom, Dick and Harry. I don't know who mm -hmm. they are, but mm -hmm. like, I mean... And then all your money starts going down. And I mean, you know, yeah. Dubai's mm -hmm. a, it's an expensive place to live. Yeah. And, you know, we, well, at the time I was there, we lost like a lot of great musicians right. who were there for years and years mm -hmm. when, you know, even when Dubai first started live entertainment mm -hmm. and then it just all went wrong because, you know, people were just accepting pittance for, mm -hmm. for, for it. I mean, we spoke about this a lot, didn't we, about what you're worth and, and yeah. you, know, you know, and why, sell yourself cheap kind of yeah. thing you know um and, and and i think it's the worst thing you do and i said you know just you know i'm just you know i'm, I'm praising myself now because i know what i was say, telling her you've got to forget all that like you know cheap stuff and yeah. all that people always pay for quality and if yeah. you've got it yeah and, and it's proved dividends and yeah. once she came to london um well which, which was really hard as much as you know i was lucky to be in that position but it was a massive transition for me but you've got to bite the bullet and I mm. think you've got to do that in a lot of businesses as well you've mm -hmm. got to take risks and I think that was a big risk for me because I'd built up years and years of of you know my contacts and my venues and you know different F&B managers and and you know I just had this I knew how to hustle for gigs yeah. I knew how yeah. to go and get work seven days a week if I wanted to mm -hmm. and I had to go Yep. I've got to let you go now. Mm -hmm. And that was like letting go of my baby, yeah. you know. Yeah. That was my little business. But that also moved me on to another fantastic journey. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I mean, thank the, you for that. You know, that this year, there's, you know, there's no two ways. I mean, I'm confident about things anyhow, but I'm also mm -hmm. realistic. And there ain't no two ways about it. Ro, I'll be releasing, the, it's called an EP now, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and it's going to be successful. And there's no two ways about it. She's going to have it records. The management team around her and... You know the the PR starting now, mm -hmm. and um, you know getting some some stuff lined up and mm -hmm. that, and you know it, it doesn't happen overnight. And I think that's another thing to you know another bit of advice is it's persistence and consistency, mm -hmm. yep. and and you know it's sacrifice. It, mm -hmm. it, like I love that word sacrifice mm -hmm. because it, it's you do have to mm -hmm. dedicate your mm -hmm. time, your energy. To make something amazing, mm -hmm. and it, but it doesn't happen. And like not that. not everyone is willing to sacrifice. I think no. you. you know, that's, well, it's, not it's like, it's like no. in business, and no one gets yeah. to the top without you know. Yeah. There's casualties on the way, mm -hmm. and I noticed in my business casualties. It could be your health. I mean, fortunately, that was all right. Mm. A few wives on the way, yeah. and. Um, you know, you fall out with family and friends. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of things have got. You know, it's okay. I don't mean, I, you know, I get on well with my family. It's their ex-wives, mm -hmm. um, but you know, something goes on the way. I think in yeah. business, yeah. And, and whether it's your health, whether it's family, whether it's your marriages, whether whether it's um, you know your finances. You know, you can you know you can lose your house. You can lose anything in it. Mm -hmm. And um, so so I think I think you know business ain't all about just making money. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's also about you know, enjoying it and, and, you know, and it's great when people learn off you. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, it's, you know, you get it all the time. People say, can you give me a bit of advice? There's no magic formula, yeah. that's for sure. No, no. And, and I think one of the important things that a lot of people leave out of being successful is hard work. Hard work, yeah. yeah. You know, I know you know this because yeah. you wouldn't be there, yeah. but the thing they leave out is hard work. Yeah. I've always tried to explain sort of, um, you know, how to be sort of successful in business. and. The best way I can, a way I've always dis best describe it is, it's like making a cake. It's like you put ingredients in, like a bit of PR in, and a, a bit of like dressing good, and a bit of like you know customer service, and a bit of quality of this, and then you take a bit out and add a bit more to that, and eventually you get a good mix. Yeah. And that's how I was sort of trying to say to somebody to get a successful business. You know, obviously lots of hard work's got to go in yeah. there. You know what I mean? Yeah. And lots of PR, mm -hmm. um, and and lots of good. You know, sort of people that that they're helping or involved with you, but you know, it's, we all know there's no there's no shortcut. And I didn't realise until all these years down the line, business is a long term venture. Yeah. You know, anybody yep. that comes to the front too quick, 
yeah. ain't gonna stay there. And yeah. I, I remember some uh, record, uh, I don't know what they call producers or people saying, oh, get this record out, get it out. Yeah. And, and yeah, yeah, she now, yeah, a manager yeah. said now, you'd have got that out and finished. You know, there's so many ways of doing it on this social media. I mean, you know, if I'm being honest, I'm only just about to turn a computer on, but <laughs> I've got enough brains that I can employ people yeah, who can do, do magic yeah. with it, yeah. you know yeah. what I mean? And, yeah. and it don't cost two bob, doesn't it? They no. put out, you know, we're mm. selling this, we're advertising that, yeah. and just an amazing market space out yeah. there for, for, for nothing. Yeah. Um, and, and that's what you've got to do. But, you know, again, I know it's an old saying, you've got to be different, you've got to be, like, again, like you said, it's a million singers, but, and you've got to have the drive. It's, yeah. You know, I mean, if you, if you could buy enthusiasm, you know what I mean? And, and yeah. I don't think yeah. you can buy that. No, I don't no. think you can buy it. You've got to no. have it. You've got to want to succeed. Mm. Um, of course, you've got to believe in yourself. You've got to be realistic. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to use that saying, if I can make it, so can anybody. Mm. I, I don't think that's right. But what I do believe is, it's a level playing field out there. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, um, the more you put in shit, the more you get out of it. Charlie, when you sold your business, Graham and I believe in celebrating right. all wins because, you know, you can go through some crap times, <laughs> but when you, you win... And you win big. And you win big, you celebrate. So we, we bought a company, um, to give you an example, we bought a company through lockdown. And um, it, it was so long drawn out. We couldn't go anywhere, and I think the, the deal actually completed at 11 o'clock at night, so we couldn't go out. We didn't <laughs> go anywhere. Um, yeah. but, we, but we are big believers in celebrating all wins. So what did you do the night you saw? Yeah, well, look, you, you're right, it's exciting. You've got a lot of tension building yeah. up, you know, yeah. and, and my lawyers, um, and Miss Condé Ray, you know, was, was a brilliant in it. Because uh -huh. a lot of these big deals stop and start, don't yeah, they? Yeah. Oh, yeah. you're going to have it. And then you're like, do I really want to sell? And, you yeah. know, and do they really want to buy it? And, it, and it, it dragged around a little bit, and then, you know, he rung me up. Um, it was quite late, I think, the, the, on, on a particular day, because it should have completed Mark Friday. Then it should have oh, been Monday. Yeah, like, what then, then? Close of business Friday. And, and, oh, and, like, and you know, when it doesn't happen, oh, you've got the you weekend. Just, and to be honest, yeah. you don't believe it's going to happen. No, in the that's end. right. Yep. And then the lawyer rang me up, Dean said, um, the money's <laughs> in your bank. <laughs> yeah, and, well, I won't say I said one went. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, and I was sort of said, well, I said, because I kept it fairly quiet of selling it, you know right. what I mean? Because you told me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I said, well, it's sold, it's gone. She went, oh my God, you're joking. No. Anyway, we was in Marbella and okay. um, we went out, we was out, and I even paid for the drinks that night. <laughs> 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 so I bought, I bought him one back. <laughs> and, and, and do you know what? We, many times we, we, we go out at the same place and you always bump into people you know because yeah. I think you know, when you're successful in business, people know yeah. you. And, and it's only just sold and I had a few people coming up to me. It's all on the paper, in the papers on the telly. I go, God, blimey. You know, I remember some guy said, you've had a really good week. I said, well, it ain't going to get any better. Than that, <laughs> is it? You know what I mean? And, and, and you know, it, it, as much as I say it's the biggest regret, it's also the best thing I've done. Yeah, so yeah. I, I, I don't know if I'm wording that right. In other words, you know, of course we want to be bigger and better than anybody. And, yeah. you know, but, you know, I ain't going to go skint, that's for sure. Oh, and if I do, then, uh, <laughs> you know, it'll be rolling with the number one hit. You know what I mean? Need to get the song so we went out yeah. and celebrated and... Yeah. and um, mm. Yeah, yeah, but you just don't realise. I mean, I'm sitting here now and I'm thinking the same thing, and I'm thinking, you just can't believe it because yeah. you know, mm -hmm. you know. I know we've done well for many years in the business, but never, you know, you just cannot believe that type of dosh. You know yeah. what I mean? I mean, yeah. uh, it's uh, you know, and, and a good thing again there. You know, it ain't just helped us. I have to say, it's helped many other people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know, obviously, well, you, you know, changed a lot of people's lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, obviously you help your family, um, the ones that talk to you. <laughs> and, um, and, um, and, and, you know, uh, there's a lot of people benefited from, from it and a lot of people benefit when we had the business. And I think that's important, do you yeah. know what I mean? Because, um, mm -hmm. you know, there's that old saying, there's no point in being the richest person in the graveyard. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, been in business and yep. that's where I am today. That's where yep. we are today. Yep. And, um, you know, there's no business like your own business. Yeah, good. Charlie, Raquel, thank you very much. It's been oh, a great, a great chat, great discussion, and uh, you know, thank you for us, having us in your beautiful home here. That's it for this episode. But tune in next time to Business Success with Graham and Leanne Carling.